Hey, we're sorry we made that mistake. Luckily for the team, it wasn't too bad, as Nakano was right behind you and was able to inherit the good position. It didn't reflect badly on the sponsors either, as Kosta crossed the line to win the moment we pitted and nobody noticed. Still, of course, I understand it was a silly situation for you, and we ruined your work and the weekend with it. We hope that we can offer you a pack better package this weekend. Jobola Jordan, Eddie Jordan says he is not happy with the way his driver behaved on the last lap of the Australian GP, as some risky maneuvers on the final lap put them at risk of losing the fifth and sixth place. Twelfth last year, British American Tobacco, who had already confirmed in 1989 that they would take over the Tyrrell team in 1999, have now decided on a team named BRA and a re establishment of the team in 1999. Speculations surrounding the deal say it could invalidate the ongoing contracts of Verstappen and Russell and allow BAR to hire new drivers. BAR wanted a star driver, according to a report from Unraced F1, BAR is looking for a star driver for the new team for the coming season. Rumor has it that a large budget is to be set aside in order to sink drivers like Villeneuve or Michael Schumacher. Welcome to qualifying for the 1998 Mexico Grand Prix. And Geki only goes P17. His teammate Nakano is 0.2 seconds ahead in P15. Jos Verstappen is splitting the two Minardis. Hello and welcome to another exciting round of the 1998 Formula One World Championship. We are here in the heart of Mexico we're really shaping up to be a wet race. Got some light rain just scattering across the track as we speak now. So we expect it's going to be dry tires at lap four. Enough talking then. 36 laps of racing to go. We've got five red lights. And away we go. Hackadin gets a good reaction. Just a little bit of wheel spin, but not enough to see position off the line. And just look at that spray being kicked up by the rear wheels of those vehicles. And it's Hakkinen who leads confidently in the first few quarters. His teammate has a slight look there, but it's not enough. Going to have to settle in for second. And then it's Schumacher going side by side with Irvine. Just picks up a little too much of the curve there. Ah, I made a mistake. It shouldn't have passed me. Copy. And then it's a Lacey on Hill, riding on board with the Sauber driver now. He'll be looking to his right-hand side, just judging the position of that Jordan with each passing moment. Squeezes him to that outside line, and indeed, it looks like he's just about going to be able to squeeze that position out. Once more, outside line becomes inside, and it's a Lacey taking the position away from Hill. I'm coming in. Box, box. Riding on board then with Irvine. You see that Tyrrell ahead is just getting between him and Hakkinen. And Irvine using that to his advantage to dive up the inside, splitting the pack with that slower car in the middle. That promotes him past Hakkinen for what could be the net race lead ultimately. We lost a lot of time in the double stack, but Shinji gained some and has moved up to ninth place. Irvine dives to the inside early, but Hakkinen dives just that little bit extra. And it's Coltart who's managed to jump the both of them. A three-way battle for the lead here. Coltar putting the brakes on early, but it's Hakkinen not yielding, pushing his teammate all the way to the line there. They're giving each other just enough space, but it's Hakkinen with the ultimate pace advantage here. He gets a little bit upset on the exit of that corner. We've seen so many drivers do that this race, and that's going to cede the position back to Coltar there. Irvine has spun. He and Villeneuve made contact. Copy it. And taking another look at what we just saw moments ago, it's Irvine once again losing the rear of the car. 
It's shades of what happened in Australia. Just put too much power down. And as you see from the perspective of Vilnov, he just ran out of room there. Nowhere to go to avoid the vehicle of Irvine. And so we see some patterns emerge this season. Irvine losing control of his car on two different occasions. And it's Vilnov getting demoted back down the pack out of position. Not the start of the season the defending world champion would have wanted. Nice overtake on Salo, keep up the pace. And here we have Hill on the Minardi. The Minardi is a little out of place in this stage of the race. Going to a good pit stop strategy, but I don't know if he's gonna have the ultimate car underneath him to defend from the Jordan behind here. And indeed, it looks like Hill just has the better run, able to get past, as does Frensen. So that's Nakano and Alesi both demoted down at the hands of the faster cars ahead of them. Sadly, Shinji's pace is not so good at the moment. You're gaining 1.2 seconds per lap on him. And it's another driver losing it at the same position that we saw Irvine lose it earlier. That was Rolf Schumacher, again, just putting too much power down. And this is for the final points paying position. Nakano versus Frensen into the first compound of its corners. It looks like they made contact. He saw the disapproval from Frensen as he threw his hand in the air. And indeed, he's able just to edge out the Minardi a little bit more, pushing him all the way to the white line there. It's not enough to keep him behind. The Minardi taking back that position there. Looking in his mirrors down this main straight. Can he keep the faster Williams behind? And that is Frensen. He's going to be retiring from this race. It looked like a mechanical failure. But that's not it for the racing itself. As the Minardi is under pressure from Eddie Irvine. Still in the race after that collision we witnessed earlier. But much further down than what he would have hoped. Box, 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 box. We try to undercut Magnuson for P11. You're racing words at the exit, we must come out on front or the undercut won't work. They're so slow, I don't think we can catch Magnuson at this way. Shinji and Magnuson unfortunately came out ahead of us and he lost his 10th place to Magnuson. Ah, uh, that's unlucky. And here we are then picking the race leader back up once more. Hakkinen ahead of his teammate Coltard there. But that's not it for the fighting as Wurtz and Geki are battling through the stadium section there. It's Geki up the inside of the Benetton taking all the curb he can. And almost losing the car there, but he just keeps it under control. Great overtake. Now go catch CJ and Magnuson. And that's dramatic scenes here as Jacques Villeneuve, another engine failure in the final stages of this race, pulling over to the left-hand side of the track. He is out of the Mexico Grand Prix. We've ordered Shinji that he should let you pass so that you can catch Magnuson. Why won't he let me pass? We told Shinji, we told him. Ah, thanks for that, Shinji. No, I can't catch Magnuson anymore. And ultimately, it all comes down to this. With only a few corners to go, Mika Hakkinen is going to cross that line and win the Mexico City Grand Prix ahead of his teammate David Coulthard. It's Hakkinen's first win of the season and the second 1-2 finish for the McLaren team. Good race and nice fights, your lap times were good, too bad it was enough points for 11th place, but you still impressed us. Good race anyway team, what a shame that we didn't score in the end, but anyway, let's go to the next race. It's Hakkinen who wins the Mexican Grand Prix, Coulthard second, and Schumacher third. The minority of Tobias Gecki gets 11th place and is in front of his teammate.